I'm Dan Drake. This is Visitor Network TV and Channel 99. We have two very special guests today. Uh, one is Dick Herman, the voice of the Whalers. Hi, Dan. How are you doing uh, today? Great to have you. And the other is Dennis Karen, who is a sidekick of, of Dick's. That's right. And yes. Works with He's a jun the junior voice of the Whalers. Junior, junior voice. <laughs> and, uh, he does the color commentary, yeah. and you do the play-by-play. -play. How does it work? We switch back. He does more play-by-play -play than I do. Mm. Uh, and I do the, the, uh, the color, and I... I Throw in the ads, you know, make mm. make sure Gino gets paid and right. the whole bit. So, uh, but we, we we make it work. We've done it so long. We sort of know what. How long have you done it? I started mm. uh, back in uh, when I get through coaching in '85. So I started my first game was in 1986. Wow, that's, we just, that's, we just that's did great. We so just, it's 20, you're 20, basically 25 years. Yeah. How about you, Dennis? Well, yeah, um, I I uh, coached uh, quite a. Quite a bit of the time, and, and really, I haven't really. Um, we we did foot. I did football for maybe 12, 15 years, maybe, and um, then the other sports. As I retired from coaching, uh, um, I, I sort of went along with them full time. What did you coach? I coached football, uh, JV football for the Whalers, and uh, basketball and baseball during my years. How about you, Dick? What did you coach? Like my, my main major job in coaching was with the uh, football team. Vito's assistant for mm -hmm. about 20 years. I, I, I got into the island in 66, <coughs> and I was sort of scouting and, and uh, helping them volunteer, and then I got coaching in 70, so I mm -hmm. coached from 70 up through uh, 86. Uh, but I, I filled in a couple of years. I helped out the baseball team. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I even coached one basketball game over in over Noss at one time. They, they, they needed a coach for something and they threw me on the plane and I went and I did a lot of uh, middle school stuff. I was a middle school teacher so I did a lot of middle school programs uh, mm -hmm. baseball and, uh, and softball and uh, basketball there. So. What, are, what changes have you seen in the period you've been doing this the 25 years? Has it changed much or is it still pretty much the same in the, terms of... The, the biggest change I've seen is in girl sports. Mm -hmm. Women's sports in the Nantucket High School. I, I think that uh, I arrived in 1972, and Dick was one of the first people that I met on the island, and we've been friends since then. But um, did you do something else besides the coaching? What did I, I taught you in school? Taught. We bought. Yeah, I taught uh, history and mm -hmm. at the high school and um, English and mm -hmm. so on and so forth, uh, whatever they needed. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, but at, at any rate, uh, I think through the years the evolution of girls' sports on the Nantucket has been the the biggest improvement that I've seen. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, well just all sports too. And when 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 I got here in '66, there was only three sports basically: it was you know football and boys and girls basketball. Mm -hmm. They had a little bit of a track team going on and off. Uh, cheerleading that was the. How big was the high school then? Ooh, small. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was it was just which is the Cyrus Pierce side of it now, mm -hmm. uh, going down just to the end. It wasn't that back wing. Uh, in '66, and uh, then they put on they put on that back wing probably in the late '60s. It mm -hmm. goes all the way down to the shop area, mm -hmm. heading towards the football field. Right. And then they brought uh, we used Academy Hill. My first mm -hmm. year here, I the middle school was up the top of Academy Hill, mm -hmm. and then the following year they moved the the seventh and eighth grade out of Academy Hill, and they left Academy Hill in elementary school. They moved us down to Cyrus Pierce, Nantucket. Believe it or not, had was sort of segregated before '66 mm. and '65. As as I hear, the you talk to some of the kids that I had, they didn't know the kids from the other side of town. Some mm -hmm. kids went to Academy Hill, some kids went to Cyrus Pierce, and they didn't know each other. They had a first grade at Academy Hill, mm -hmm. first grade at Cyrus. Mm -hmm. They didn't know each other till they got to like the sixth grade that, that they came together. Mm -hmm. So they did away with that and put all right. the first graders together. All the sixth graders, and they even had they even had a school in Scarlet up to mm -hmm. the early '60s. Right. I talked to some of the Joe, like Joe Swain, in my mm -hmm. first class, and he he went to the Scarlet School for the first three years. So, yeah, talk about was evolving in the but, early but '60s. My, the point of my question was really that the fact that there are a lot more kids now. Oh yeah. Than there were in, in, available to play sports. I than, think so. Yeah. yeah. It, it, there were. It, I, looking at the numbers that the yeah. superintendent just put out this mm -hmm. year, there's, there's 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 probably a hundred more kids in the the, the, the seven through twelve than right. we left. Right. We retired uh, two thousand. You mm -hmm. know, so it's just it, and it's just there's more people staying on the island year round, right. which which means mm -hmm. we. 
we had a lot of kids that would stay here through September and October, and then their families would leave. Right. And then they come back in May. That doesn't mm -hmm. happen anymore. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we deal, dealt with boys because we co coach boys sports. Right. And, um, you know, usually the, in the high school, the top, top four grades, 9 through 12, there were maybe 79, 88, 90 boys in the, in the four grades. So mm -hmm. it, you know, that, that gives you an example of how small it was. Right. And it's probably twice that now, at least. Oh, at least, yeah. 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 Um, what are the challenges of doing the job? What are the challenges of, of broadcasting these games? Fog. Other than dealing with Gino, of fog course. and fog and <laughs> snowstorms. You you, uh, you you set a schedule. You set a mm -hmm. schedule, and uh, you you got to check on it. Mm -hmm. You know, up to six hours before the game. You know, right. with, with weather conditions and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, teams teams don't want to come here if they're afraid they're gonna, not going to get home. Right. You know, so anytime the wind picks up, most of the teams now come on the boat. So mm -hmm. the fog doesn't involve the team so much, but it does involve the uh, the officials getting here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had situations where teams have been here and uh, the officials aren't here because they, they get they get fogged out. In what happens like in that case like that? Well, we always remember that one game, that's one softball game where the two teams were all warmed up, ready to play, and they, uh, they said the official was still in Hyannis, and I had done some softball officiating so I left the stand and uh, mm. went out behind the pitcher and started calling the game and I you only had to do it for three innings you should, have, you should have had a mic on fog <laughs> I should have had a mic on right <laughs> um, I'm sure it would be very difficult to come up with the most memorable moment but what what uh, what are some of the me more memorable moments you've had or maybe there is a most memorable <laughs> moment I don't know wow. Dennis most memorable moment. Uh, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> well, I was hoping each of you would have one. <laughs> well, I mean, it's certainly the success of the, the teams over the year. You know, my most memorable moment in coaching would, you know, making it to that first Super Bowl team. Right. You know, the '79 team. I, I always like to say was, was the best team, but we lost that first game. And in those days, it was hard to get to the Super mm. Bowl. And we lost that first game, and they won nine straight, and the team was hitting its... But we, we came in third place, mm -hmm. no Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. But then the 80 team came along, and, and they went 11-0 mm -hmm. that year. And I think that was the highlight of, of my career coaching. Uh, as far as broadcasting, you know, many memorable moments. And, yeah. and I would go back to the Super Bowls, calling games where my two sons both mm -hmm. played for the Whalers and calling games mm -hmm. with them in the Super Bowl. And my second son actually won the... His team won the last two Super Bowls, the only team to win. So mm. that would be my highlights as a personal highlight. But you know, just watching kids as a middle school teacher, you saw kids in the in the in the seventh grade, boys and girls, and they were just you know little runts, and, and mm. all of a sudden they, they got to high school, and you watch them mature, and then they start playing sports, coming out of their shells, and just watching that was was special to me. And you still see that, of course. Oh, you still Not see the that. Same I, degree, well, you don't know them as much well, now. That's yeah. the one thing people say. What do you miss about teaching? You know, I don't miss going to work every day teaching, but I do miss meeting the kids, meeting the families mm. as as uh, as seventh grade, as mm. twelve and thirteen years old, right. and then watching them, you know, well, yeah. go through the high school and, and graduate. I think the worst moment <laughs> that, that <laughs> was memorable. That's, a, that was a good, that's another question. <laughs> <laughs> the worst was the '92 Martha's Vineyard Nantucket football game. Both teams went into the game um, eight eight and one, and. Uh, the winner was going to go to the Super Bowl and win the Mayflower League mm -hmm. championship, and we held it. We held the lead was it 14 to nothing until four minutes left in the game. And we lost to nothing. 12 to nothing. We lost the game 14 to 12, mm -hmm. and I, the, my, my son was the quarterback of that team, and I, you know it was, it was and his son was on that team, and it was he a, a de dev devastating loss. Mm -hmm. But uh, and that propelled Martha's Vineyard. That game, uh, that turned the whole series, the Vineyard Nantucket uh, game, around. You know, that up until then, we, I don't think we had lost maybe one or two games to the Vineyard in my time here. In the Island Cup series. The, in the Island Cup series, and then after that, um, it, it the Vineyard has has dominated. Uh, so it's that that was perhaps the most memorable and worst moment combined. Is it safe to assume that your favorite sport to broadcast is football? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. What, uh, yeah. What's, what's your second favorite? <laughs> I like uh, doing basketball. Basketball, yeah. yeah. 
baseball's a little slow. We get we get to joke around a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we've got to get a lot of kibitzing materials. How did this start? How did you get started in the broadcasting end of it? Well, I, I, I was I was getting out of coaching in '85, '86 mm -hmm. because my wife decided she wanted to change uh, her. Uh, she was a teacher and she wanted to do something else, and so she she became a dental hygienist. Mm -hmm. But to do that, she had to go to uh, Cape Cod Community College uh, five training, days a week right. to get her courses. So she was leaving the island Monday morning and coming back Friday afternoons. And I had three kids, and uh, we had three kids, and they were, you know, six, 12, and 14, something mm -hmm. like that there. So I decided I should take a year off from coaching, you mm -hmm. know, just to be able to keep a handle on, on everything. And uh, so the, the fellows that were doing the uh, TV broadcast, and we're both leaving it that mm -hmm. year. So Vito says to me, as long as you're taking a year off, why don't you jump in and yeah, do the TV for the mm -hmm. year? And, you know, that history. The rest then. is history. <laughs> and, uh, we mentioned Vito. we got to tell our, our one favorite Vito story. We have a million favorite Vito stories, but uh, one of our favorite Vito stories is we went up to a, uh, a clinic up in uh, the I'm Marriott. sorry, for those who don't know, this is Vito. Vito, Vito Mr. Mr. Football yeah, on the right. entire That's yeah, exactly right. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> So we went up to this uh, football clinic in, in February. Uh, they used to always hold them up there with the, the Newton Marriott. It's fun. You know, coaches come in, professional coaches, college coaches. And you see a lot of familiar faces and everything. And so you go up there on a, like a Friday night or a Saturday night and you, you stay for one or two nights. And so we're, we go up and we do, well, I guess we did an all day seminar Saturday, you know. And Vito says he's going to meet somebody, so -so. Some, some coach. But he's going to meet him downtown in Park Square. So he says to me and Dennis, "How how do we get from <laughs> Newton, you know, down? Vito, go right down Commonwealth Ave, and you run right into Park Square." So so bye, Vito. Bye, Vito. Me, me and Dennis go over and we, we we have we have a beer and we head up to the room at ten o'clock, eleven o'clock. About twelve thirty, Vito comes into the room, yelling. You guys gave me wrong directions. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> he says, I said, you got lost. How'd you get lost? You go right down Commonwealth Ave. He said, I went over the bridge. <laughs> what bridge? The Mystic River Bridge. <laughs> I come back over the bridge. I went over the bridge a second time. <laughs> I mean, we're rolling, laughing. Why are you going over the Mystic River Bridge if you're going down Cornwall Avenue? So we may have to give Vito equal time. Oh, the, oh he would be great. Yeah. Dennis, Karen, and Dick Herman, the voices, of, the voices of the Whalers. Thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you for Thank having you us, Dan. Thank you for having us, Gino.